and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the probiotic sparkling drink that's sweeping the nation. And it is... Kombucha. Kombucha. And I have with me here my kombucha connoisseur friend, Ben. Ben, please introduce yourself. Hello world, uh, my name is Ben. Uh, I've been doing kombucha, I don't know, for a couple months now. So I don't know if I'd say connoisseur, but learning things. Great, so why did you start? Um, I don't know, just because the drinks were good, healthy for you, whatever. Um, and I thought it would be fun to experiment different flavors, try to create my own that weren't always in stores. So what's your favorite? Um, that I've made or in the stores? My favorite that I've made so far has been raspberry. Um, it seems to go pretty well. The, uh, the other crowd favorite has been apple cinnamon. Oh, I'll have to try that. So, as a beginner, what tips do you have for me and anyone watching? Um, when you boil your first fermentation, don't put the hot water in. It kills your scobies. Okay. Um, other than that, keep it in a warmish place with sugar so that it can do the fermentation process. Um, and what I do, my container has a little spigot on it, so I take a sip every couple days. Oh, okay. And see how sweet or not sweet it has gotten. It's pretty good. I would say give making it yourself a try because it, it always turns out differently and you can add flavors that you like. I know a lot of the store-bought ones are way too carbonated or taste way too much like vinegar or the ginger's too strong. Um, being able to control that in your home, I think helps a lot. Makes sense, makes sense. So now speaking of controlling things in your own home, I have now made one and a half batches of kombucha. And the first one tasted super vinegary and was actually pretty gross. And the second one is still more acidic than yours, but definitely doesn't taste like vinegar and is tasty. All right, so what flavors would you like to try or what would you like to experiment with in the future? Um, I like asking people kind of what flavors they would like to try as well as tossing in a couple of my own. My latest batch, uh, my sister suggested to try grapefruit. So I'm gonna see how that turns out. Um, I'm finally, because it happens everywhere in the stores, I'm finally trying my own ginger flavor. Okay. So I'm going to see how that turns out and kind of compare it to the rest of them. Let me know, because I want to try that yeah. one too. Um, uh, the other one, I mentioned earlier, apple cinnamon. Um, I mm. toss a cinnamon stick in there. I would be careful with that. Mm. My last one, I think I left the cinnamon stick in too long. Um, and you could kind of start tasting the wood oh, from the stick itself. Um, but the stick was a good idea. I would okay. just put cinnamon it in later stick. or take it out somewhere. Um, other than that, I just I go through the store and buy one fruit of everything and just toss it in. <laughs> that works. That's experimenting. Um, um, what about as far as teas and sugars? What do you use? So far, I've been using Earl Grey black tea, and I did buy a ginger something ginger tea, but I haven't tried it yet because I was trying to master this. And then sugar, I just use regular white sugar, yeah. like I would put into cookies or something. But, fun experiment for me because you set it and you don't have to come back to it for a couple days. Set it and forget it? <laughs> exactly. Oh. Well, I'd like to thank Katie for having me on the show today. Um, it was good to exchange recipes and then uh, kind of how she does it compared to how I do it. So now we can each take something away from that. Um, so for all of you out there, please send us your recipes. Let us know what you do how you do things a little bit differently and how we could potentially make cool flavors or do it a little bit better. So thanks. For my first batch of kombucha, I have here a SCOBY which I bought online and came in this package along with a little bit of starter tea, a pickle jar that I saved, and some black tea. I started by warming up some very filtered water and then adding a third cup of sugar and the water just has to be warm enough to dissolve it. Once all of the sugar has been dissolved, I added two tea bags to the mixture and I let them steep for about 15 minutes and then removed them. Once the tea mixture has cooled to room temperature, 
you can add the SCOBY. And definitely be sure that it's not hot tea, it's room temperature tea. Here I'm just measuring out the amount of starter tea that the SCOBY came with because the recipe I'm using called for a half a cup of starter tea or vinegar. So since the package only had a quarter cup of the starter tea, I then have to also add a quarter cup of white distilled vinegar to the mixture. Now that all of the ingredients are combined, I'm putting a coffee filter over the top of the jar and just securing it there with a rubber band. Time to be patient. I have to let this sit for 7 to 30 days in a place that is out of direct sunlight, so I'm putting it in a cabinet. Wow! Two weeks seem to be just the right amount of time. Um, Online it said the longer you leave it, the less sweet it is, and I don't like sweet drinks, so I decided to leave it two weeks instead of just one. And look, there's like a whole second layer on there. This is so cool. It's like a science experiment. Um, hmm. It smells a little vinegary, but not too bad. And so my plan is to take that new second piece of SCOBY and put it in a new jar so I can do twice the amount of tea. Hope that works. Now in hindsight I probably could have made a larger batch of tea for the size of SCOBY that I started with. So this time I'm going to try that and use a larger batch for the initial SCOBY and a smaller batch for my new piece of SCOBY that I just got. First things first I want to make sure that I save enough of the starter tea to start my second batch. And since this is really small, I'm only going to be able to fill one jar of kombucha, but I'll work on building up to, you know, gallons and gallons of it if it works out. I still haven't tasted it. It could taste disgusting. That's possible. Just want to throw that out there. Okay. Removing. <gasps> oh, I get to touch it. Okay. Ugh. Weird. Hmm. Can't tell what that smells like, really. Okay, so here's the new piece. Hey, Stark. <laughs> that smell good? And so the recipe that I used last time had a half a cup of starter tea, so I'm going to put a half a cup back in there. more to be safe. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. Exciting. Now I'll put that aside and do the same process I did last time and hopefully we'll get an even bigger piece of SCOBY. <laughs> now it was recommended to me by my kombucha connoisseur friend to use raspberry to flavor it. So that's what I'm going to start off with. I only have four little raspberries in here because this container isn't huge. I don't actually know the proportion. Oh well. <clears throat> so I'm going to funnel in some of this tea. Again, I'm going to leave hopefully about a half a cup in here to start the next batch. That should be fine. That's more than a half cup, but can't hurt. All right. Now the plan is to seal this off and let it sit for a few days and then check on it. And when it's fizzy, when you open it, then you're done. So we'll see how long that takes for a jar this size. Can I just say I'm really proud of this guy for reproducing and surviving because I wasn't really sure how it would go, but this is pretty cool. 
You start with this piece of flubbery skin, and then you grow more flubbery skin. That's cool. Okay. <sighs> anyway. Back to the, you know, making kombucha thing. Alright, it has been one week since I bottled this up with the raspberries, and we're going to taste it. He's not going to taste it. I'm going to taste it. He's here for moral support, and because he loves the camera. Time for a taste test. Now, the lid is really like it popped, so I'm guessing it's going to be really fizzy. And because of that, I'm putting on some safety glasses, just in case. Bye, Stark. Look, even Stark's afraid that it's gonna fizz up. <laughs> it's like waiting for a balloon to pop. Oh my gosh! Whew, okay. I got so nervous. Oh, there's definitely some bubbles in there. It's bubbling. Still smells pretty vinegary. The raspberries look really weird. Ew. Ew. Hmm. Here I was deciding just how terrible this tasted. And after a couple more sips of this, it tasted pretty disgusting. Okay. got a good fist to it. I'd probably put more raspberries in there next time because the raspberry flavor isn't crazy strong. But cool! I made my first bottle of kombucha. So this is now time for me to experiment and see if not letting the first fermentation go so long makes it taste different. Or follow Ben's advice and taste it along the way so you know when it's about to become too vinegary and you don't find out too late. Or just adding more raspberries makes it taste different. Now that's the fun part. Thankfully, I learned all of my lessons the first time, and for my second batch, I added twice the amount of tea. I tasted it so it didn't get too vinegary, and then I let more raspberries ferment for longer, and it tasted amazing. So yes, there's hope for making your own kombucha. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe you've tried it yourself and you want to leave some comments for me below. Let me know if you try it using this video and let me know what your favorite recipes are. This is really fun for me because it's definitely something different and it was kind of a mix between a science experiment and a foodie experiment and it was really fun. If you found this video useful or maybe even just entertaining, go ahead Check out the other videos on my channel. Maybe give me a thumbs up or a subscribe. And I'll catch you later. Cootie. Captain Cootie. Out. Ha <laughs> <laughs>